Hello, welcome back. In this lesson, we will learn about while loop and how can we use while loop in SQL scripting. By using while loop, we will solve the factorial exercise which I gave in previous lesson. So the exercise is create a scalar function to solve derive the factorial value and uh, one input parameter to decide which factorial value we need to derive and hint is while loop okay let's quickly go to the repositories and create a new function new scalar function and i'll give the name as factorial finish so we got the skeleton and we will change this schema name as t4h and factorial value just I will simply say i and the data type is integer ok and returns we need to give output parameter I will give f and again integer and language is SQL script so I forgot to mention about this statement so here we are informing system saying we are writing SQL script and SAP HANA also support L script and R script so that's why we are exclusively mentioning SQL script is the language what we are using in building this function if you are building function using R script then you need to mention language R script okay that's the difference so I'm going to declare a variable declare x and data type integer and I'm assigning the initial value as 2 then I'm going to assign value to f also f is our output parameter i am going to assign 1 and here while x is less than or equal to i that is the factorial value what we want to derive while x is less than or equal to i do following what we need to do we need to assign f value with f multiplied by x and y ok now we are good this is going to derive a factorial value of whatever the value we give here ok how exactly it's going to work so I am declaring x variable and assigning initial value as 2 and for the output parameter f I am assigning initial value 1 while x is less than i so here my x value is 2 for example let's assume i is 5 ok so in this case x is x is less than 5 so 2 is less than 5 then it will execute this statement f is going to get the value of f multiplied by x so f value is 1 and i value is sorry f value is 1 and x value is 2 so 1 multiplied by 2 that's going to store in f value then the loop is not ended here so still x is less than i so it will continue it will continue forever because always the x value is less than x value means 2 is less than 5 so instead of going into the infinite loop we need to break that infinite loop by using x is equal to x plus 1 so this is going to x value is going to increase in each loop with the addition of 1 value 1 so first time so let's write here 
first in the very first x value is 2 x is equal to 2 and i is equal to 5 so x is less than 5 2 is less than 5 so my f value is going to be f initial value of f is 1 multiplied with x x is 2 okay now f i am going to get the f value as 1 multiplied by 2 so here this this statement then my x value is going to increase with one value so now it is 3 still 3 is less than 5 so it will come here again so my f value right now i have 2 so this result is 2 right so in the next in the second iteration f is equal to 2 multiplied by x value 3 and now my value is 2 multiplied by 3 6 like that x value is going to increase to 4 then f is equal to 6, 6 multiplied by 4 24 and finally in the fourth fifth iteration so x value is going to 5 and it's less than or equal to 5 and then f value is going to 24 multiplied by 5 and in the sixth iteration when it becomes 6 then this condition is going to fail while x is less than or equal to i but x value is 6 and i value is 5 so it will break and it goes to end while and then end the statement that's how the factorial value gets derived okay so let me delete this let's activate it okay so it is activated successfully with the system user and let's see our functions here in the schema okay i got the factorial Let's open the SQL console. Select factorial. I'll give one first from dummy. One factorial is one. So if we go to this case, one declare okay while x is less than or equal to i x by default uh, the initial value for x is itself 2 so here x 2 and i is 1 so in that case automatically it gets fail and it directly goes here and whatever the value in f is going to come f is equal to 1 that's the reason we got the result 1 and for 2 also it's going to 2 like that we can try for 5 120 if i say 50 factorial value of 50 is a very big number i don't know what is the exact number but it's going to be very big and my code will get break numerical overflow exception so to solve this problem we need to change the return parameter from integer to double because integer can't hold that big number so that's why we need to change the data type to double and I'm going to activate as we are using design time object we can change any time and that's going to reflect in the function automatically see here return type now double let's run the 50 factorial now and we are able to achieve the result with double data type so that's how we can derive factorial value by using while loop 
so before closing this session so i would like to give i would like to summarize what is scalar user defined function i have prepared the notes so here is the summary of scalar user defined function you can use more than one input parameter you can use as many as input parameters and returns only one scalar value and body can contain only expressions and imperative logic imperative logic means if then else condition or loops like while loop for loop and you can't use sql statement in the body we already tested this if you write a sql statement like a select statement in the body it's going to give error because uh, scalar functions are compiled with l language in the background so l languages are not uh, by using l we can't perform table operations that's the reason sql is not allowed in scalar functions you can use functions in select where group by so here select we used in the select like that you can also use in where class and group by class you can call in another user defined function or stored processor so once you define the scalar scalar user defined function you can call this function in other other functions like a table function or processor so we will see this case when we go to the table functions and most simple db object in sql scripting so scalar function is the simplest smallest object where you can use sql scripting and table functions processors are going to be little bit complex compared to the scalar user defined function okay so that's the summary of scalar user defined function and one last thing if you are planning for sap hana certification and uh, sql scripting sql and sql scripting also part of that hana certification so for that this table is going to be useful so for now i have filled only for the scalar function and later when we go to the table functions and stored processor we will fill this uh, fill, fill rest of the fields so let's see so scalar user defined functions performance wise very high performance but functionality is low because we are not able to use sql statements in the scalar user defined function and performance wise why it is very high because we are not using any ddl data definition language or dml d data manipulation language so system knows if it is a scalar user defined function system knows it's not going to change or create anything so it's safe to run so that's why it will not check it will not perform any further checks while executing scalar user defined function that's the reason the performance is high for scalar user defined function and functionality wise very limited okay so we'll fill the table user defined and stored processor in coming sessions when we go to that table functions and stored processors okay so see you in the next session until then happy learning bye